February 9th, St. Cyril of Alexandria, Doctor of the Church. Born at Alexandria, Egypt, and nephew of the patriarch of that city, Theophilus, Cyril received a classical and theological education at Alexandria and was ordained by his uncle. Upon the death of his uncle, Theophilus, in the year 412, he was raised to the See of Alexandria. He began to exert his authority over the churches there in order to reform them and to combat certain heresies. Foremost was the heresy of Nestorius, a priest monk of Antioch who was made Archbishop of Constantinople, and there he taught with some of the clergy that there were two distinct persons in Christ, that of God and that of man, joined only by a moral union, whereby, according to them, the Godhead dwelled in the manhood merely as its temple. Consequently, they denied the incarnation that God was made man. He also said that the Blessed Virgin ought not to be styled the mother of God, but only of the man Christ, whose humanity was but the temple of the divinity. St. Cyril strove to win back Nestorius by letters in which his personal meekness is rivaled only by his vigor and breadth of doctrine. But Nestorius was obstinate. Since he had no argument in response, he began to make personal complaints against the patriarch. As always happens, there were pacifists who, although they did not accept Nestorius's errors, thought it would be best not to reply to him for fear of further embittering him and increasing the scandal, thereby wounding charity. In response to this, Cyril criticized those who were more afraid of affirming the truths of the Catholic faith than falling into heresy. As St. Cyril has said, if our fear for some disturbance is stronger than our zeal for God's glory and thus prevents us from speaking the truth, how shall we dare in the presence of the Catholic people to celebrate the holy martyrs whose glory lies in the very fact that by their lives they made example of the words to fight for justice even unto death? St. Cyril defended that our Lord was both God and man. The heretics sustained the opposite. The false middle, the ones who were partisans of ecumenism and wanted to dialogue between the two positions, were of the opinion that it was better not to defend the good position, hence not to offend the heretics. They argued that this would irritate the adversaries, make it more difficult to convert them, and violate charity. These moderates were against St. Cyril because the saint attacked the heretics. Does this not remind you of many reactions of moderates in our days who criticize the work of the true Catholic Church? We should not attack the heretics, communists, and progressives, but instead start a dialogue. To attack them would be unproductive, it would irritate them, etc. According to Professor Oliveria, these moderates correspond to those of whom Scripture says, I would that thou were hot or cold. But because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit thee out of my mouth. The moderates against St. Cyril wanted to appease the heretics. Are there not some in our day that appease heretics so as to get along? Again, according to Professor Oliveria, these are the ones that do the most harm, because they present themselves to the average Catholics as claiming to be Catholic, but warning them against following ones who take the true Catholic position. These moderates say others are exaggerated in their views, etc. It is thanks to these people that the number of real fighters for the Catholic faith is much less than it should be. Let us ask St. Cyril to give us the courage to fight to convert the heretics and the moderates with hypocritical positions who wish to appease them.